Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 200 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah i have like a rogue eyebrow that is like must be ridiculously long and it's like sticking down and i just all i see is a blurry hair coming it's out like of my eye longer hair than crystal gale <laughs> lord I don't know what's up with that. My eyebrows grow faster than anything else on my body. I was going to say, and this is a bald man speaking. <laughs> Got like, maybe you could grow all of your eyebrows and then just like go down the back of your head. What about that? <laughs> that would be interesting. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I can weirdly grow like hair really quickly on my toes. That's an odd place to be growing. I have hair. to like shave the hair on my toes because I could grow my own furry slippers. <laughs> This has been an interesting week. Just a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. So Thursday, I was um, at work, and then I went to a game. And I got off of the field, and I looked at my phone, and I had over 2,000 emails. And honestly, when you first said that to me, I thought, well, someone has pranked us because... You had talked about not liking to see unread email messages. Yeah. And I, I was like, what is going on? How did I get like 2,000 emails in like an hour and a half? And I'm like, and I just see them. And they're all junk emails. They're all like, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. Click here to confirm your subscription. And I'm like, what is going on? And so I started researching it. And it turns out that there's something called like email spoofing. And I'm talking about this because we have been talking about like the amount of emails that you always have unread in your phone, right? Yeah, you. And I got a point week. for this one. So I start reading, and there's something called email spoofing. And what it is is somebody like gets your email address and then puts you through like a virus, basically, and has you get subscribed to hundreds and thousands of websites and that normally it goes away within 24 hours unless they want to just continue to play this game with you yeah but at a lot of times what it is is they're they're doing something malicious and they're trying to hide the maliciousness so that you'll in just your be, email so that you'll just be like this is an annoying prank but that is all it is and you just start deleting everything that's the point behind it is that they're gonna like hack your bank account and then they do this and you don't, you're not even going to bother looking at your emails. You're just going to go and delete, 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 and delete the warning email that you got from whatever they're actually doing. Yeah. Well, Friday, it kind of stopped. This, this happened Thursday. Friday kind of stopped. There were maybe 150 throughout the day. So I'm like, okay, fine. It's going away. Somebody it's was done. just playing a stupid prank, right? Yeah. So I do my game Friday night and I get off the field again. We got to the, I put my phone in the car at six o'clock. I got off the field at like 9.45. It was a longer game than normal because like everything that weird could happen in a high school football game happened. Yeah. And of course, because I was the referee. And so what happened was I get back in the car and I pick up my phone and there's like 700 emails. It's back. And I'm like, yeah, it's back. What's going on? And I was still in the parking lot of the school. And I'm like, I'm just going to go through these right now. Because now it's bothering me. Like, why is it back? Or is somebody trying to maliciously do something? Yeah. And so I'm sitting in the parking lot of the school. And I start going through them. And I get about halfway through them. And I see a couple of orders for samsclub.com. And I'm like, oh, I don't even think anything of it because I don't order anything. But sometimes you've ordered something. We've ordered stuff for the church. And I kind of, I didn't delete it, but I skipped past it. And then I went through and I got all the emails out of there. And then I go back and, yeah, somebody has hacked my Sam's Club account. And I just recently used my Sam's Club account because, like, we had to buy more chairs. We, you showed them on that one video yeah. for, because we have so many youth and kids attending. Yeah. We needed more chairs. So I ordered the chairs from Sam's Club on my account. And I did not know that Sam's Club 
when you use your credit card automatically saves the credit card into your account. Which I don't understand why they do that. My mom has said that she's asked them, please don't save it. And they still save it. Yes. They told me that there's somewhere down on the very bottom that you can click, you know, to not save it. But I looked. I can't find it anywhere. Well, and she did talk to them about it and they didn't click it it didn't work what ended up happening was somebody ordered three different things like money changers and some kind of a coffee pot <laughs> and they ordered it in my sister's name to some address in brooklyn using my church credit card and it's already been shipped out and i'm like i call sam's club and they're like oh yeah our fraud department's closed for the weekend I'm like, your fraud department's closed for the weekend. So no one commits any fraud on Saturday and Sunday, apparently. Only Monday through Friday. It, it was just like, it was crazy. And I'm looking at these things like, who is ordering? And it's already been shipped out. But here's the thing. You have the address. I feel like that's like Sam's Club should be like, we're delivering to this address and this must be where the thieves are, right? Well, right. Well, my thing was this, is that it did come down to like, I was like, Wait a second. So whatever this is, is being shipped to an address that is not the billing address for the credit card and it is not an address on file. That's a good idea. Why couldn't it at least raise like a red flag to like send me an email like, did you place this order? Because none of this doesn't address anything. Right? Yeah. None of that. So unfortunately, I did call the credit card company that night and they're like, we're going to immediately cancel it. Because I feel bad. It would be bad enough if it was my personal credit card. But the fact that it's but the it was church like the one. church credit card, yeah. and it's like it's like for money counters. Yeah, like what are you doing? <laughs> it was like just odd stuff. And yes, and then I did get a hold. I called Sam's Club back on Saturday, like after all of my games, and they tried saying the same thing. I'm like, I have got to talk to somebody because I just got to notice that this is being delivered on Monday, and I want this fixed right now. Well, and I think they would want it yeah. fixed. Get the guy that's taking money from them and goods. Yeah, and I, so I finally, I did talk to somebody, and the lady was like, yeah, well, your credit card company called us. The two of them have been canceled. That's and the good. third one that was already shipped, she's like, I'm contacting FedEx right now for you. And we're going to have them send that back to us. But it yeah. was just it was just the hassle. Yeah. And now I'm still getting hundreds and hundreds of emails in my account. Sorry. But the reason I brought this up, aside from the fact that it was part of our week and it was an annoying part of our week, we talked about like all of the emails that you have. And so people have been going on our Facebook family group and saying like, I can top Rachel's number, right? More I know, than seven or 800? Yeah, well, I think Miss Tara had like 11,000. Well, somebody had you beat. So I, I actually saved this onto my iPad. So Heather Hello, sent Heather. us a message on our Facebook group. Or no, an email rather. And she said, I just wanted to send you a screenshot of my unread emails. I unsubscribe all the time and it doesn't seem to help. Mine are mostly Facebook notifications and Amazon. Plus, I homeschool my children and it seems like I always have to give my email address to get access to different websites. And True. I can't figure out how to swipe emails into the trash. I'll only archive them. So I just turn off the notifications. So anyway, I'm going to put this up here. Are you ready? I don't even know if you saw this. No. Take a look at her screenshot. <gasps> 46,505. Unread emails. Well done, ma'am. Well you should be done. I'm proud of that. That is amazing. That is amazing. Now, I did find out in this whole spoofing thing with the email, the worst thing you can do if this happens to you and you just start getting like random things, like you got put on a mailing list that you didn't subscribe to, uh -huh. the worst thing you can do is go down to the bottom of it and hit unsubscribe. Why? Because what ends up happening, you never actually subscribed to it to begin with. Okay. So when you do that, you're actually telling this system, I've got a live one here. Like this is a working email address. Oh no. And so you'll get even more. So what I found out is the best thing to do is just send them to your spam and they'll eventually stop if you have nothing to do with it. And the only ones you should ever click unsubscribe on are the ones that you actually subscribe to, like Joanne Fabrics. Yes, or Michael's. <laughs> Gracious.
but oh man. So that was the end of my week, but the rest of the week was pretty good. It was awesome, except for, yeah, the end of the week for me. Friday must have just been a day. Friday was awesome because uh, I went to a comic book convention. Yes. That was amazing. And the 501, um, a Star Wars organization that sends, like, amazing people in characters, all of their costumes, they make themselves, and they're amazing. They're, like, movie grade. Um, was there and that was a really fun time but Caleb was working at the show and he I saw him and he was like my eye really hurts and I was like just suck it up walk it off like don't be a wuss I mean I was bad I was like you're fine then Saturday morning he wakes up and he looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame, like his face is all messed up. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is serious. And I like ignored it. So we go to the doctor and how bizarre is this? The doctor says he has a very aggressive infection in his eyelid, <laughs> not his eye. I shouldn't be laughing, but. His eyelid. So they're like, it's a good thing you brought him in because this could have like escalated quickly. So we're going to put him on an aggressive like antibiotics and like antibiotic eye drops. And I just was like, oh my Lord, I'm the worst mom ever. Like I totally was just like, you're fine. That's how we've always been though. That's how I was raised. Like unless you were dying, you went to school. I know. Right? Like you, you could be anything. You could have blood pouring out of a cup. Go to school. You're like, fine. You're fine. That's just, you never missed school when I was a kid. I mean, no. nobody miss school everybody was trying to achieve that like you know 100 percent attendance <laughs> like we were in a competition right that's right you would get like a gold star or a piece of paper that said you know hey you never missed a day and that was like gold and i have a history as a dad like kids would get a cut or something and i'm like you're a man man scar scars are manly don't Chicks worry about scars. it let's just get some scotch tape and we'll like kind of tape up the cut it'll heal don't worry about it the things that i have come home to where it's got like a butterfly clip on it and i'm like oh we probably should have gone to the hospital on that one so yeah that that was definitely a, a bad end to the week for you but i do have a special present for you oh yeah yeah what is that i thought everybody would want you to see it opened. I bought I bought this for you. Something you've been wanting for a long time. Okay. I think we'll finally like settle this. You're really doing this to me on camera. Yes. You know how I feel about getting gifts. I know. Okay. But you're gonna love this gift. This Before is something I even you've been open wanting. This, I gotta ask, is there anybody else who feels this way? I am not a good gift getter. No, I'm a you're great not great gift giver. He likes to play Santa on Christmas morning and like hand out presents, but then he's got a giant like mound of presents because he has opened nothing. And I want to go open them in private because I feel awkward getting a present. I love giving presents, but I'm not really great at getting them. Is there anybody else who's like that? Like, do you like have this feeling of like, I really don't even want anything. Like, let me just go open it in private so that I don't have to feel kind of weird. Not me, babe. I <laughs> love presents. Like, bring them. And I mean, you can wrap anything from a bottle of nail polish to my iPhone. I love it all. Like, it is fun getting presents. I love unwrapping presents. The kids were like that, too, when they were kids. We used to, like, we wanted them to have all, like, the same exact amount of presents. That, that was number one. We had, like, everybody gets the same exact spent on them, and everybody has to have the same amount of presents. So a lot of times we would have to make a last-minute, like, trip to Dollar Tree so that we stayed within budget. But, like, they had the, the same amount of presents to open. Because you didn't want, like, one kid that got a high-priced item and then that's the only thing they open. Right. And but everybody else opening 20 presents. What I was talking about was the fact that we wanted them to have a lot of presents. So we would buy, like, the pack of, like, 50 Matchbox cars. Yep. Open up the 50 and then literally wrap every single car. So they had 50 presents to open. They would be there forever to the point where our kids would actually be like, can I just open them later? I feel like I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open this up. What is this? A rooster. You finally got your chicken. No. There's your pet chicken. <laughs> You're good. I feel like we no, finally. I want chicken. We finally settled the chicken. Miss Miss Katie said that I need to get chickens. You got one. You know the dog's going to get a hold of us. Yes. 
What is that? What kind of noise is that? It's um, it's a rooster that looks like he's seen better days. I think that's from Moana. Well, thank you, honey. You're welcome. And we got some more presents in the mail. Yes, we did. Get some mail. So this one comes from Miss Debbie. It says, uh, keep the keto recipes coming and make them so easy, even Debbie can do it. I love it. So we got a beautiful ornament from Miss Debbie. Look at this. It's a barbecue apron with all of the spatulas and the little oven mitt. Is that adorable? I love that. That is gorgeous. You know, Thank I was you, thinking. Thank you, Miss Debbie. I was thinking we're getting really all of these cool ornaments. Mm -hmm. We still don't have a Christmas tree. We do not have a Christmas tree, but we will get one. And I've seen a lot of them going on sale this week. There was one I almost got. <gasps> I've never been like a white Christmas tree person. Like, have you guys ever, like, what kind of Christmas tree do you like? Like, some people like them flocked. I love flocked trees. Some people like a white or a pink tree. Some people like just a traditional, like, it needs to look super, super real. Some people only want a real tree. Um, so, like, what is your preference? Um, put that in, down in the comments below. But there was a really cute tree at Walmart. It was only, like, $89, and it was a white tree, and it came with, like, like um, the top, the head of it was like a like a, a Frosty the Snowman head, and it had hands. No, it was so cute. No, I, I love, love real trees, but living here in Florida, we like to put up our tree like literally on Thanksgiving. Yeah, and take it down like two days after Christmas. And I like a lot of lights, and it becomes like a fire hazard. Yeah, because they just they brown too quickly. So we'll probably get another one of those like Bethlehem nights. That thing lasted a long time until. The dog and the cats chewed it all. It would still be with us if it wasn't for Tab. <laughs> so here we go. This one is coming from Stephanie. I'm gonna hurt you. That, that was, this was probably a mistake. This was a mistake. So it says the diary of a fish. And what's going on with the fish's life? Sunday, swam around bowl, ate, slept. Monday, swam around bowl, ate, slept. Tuesday, swam around bowl, ate, slept, and it just keeps going on. Cause yeah, like what else? Are you looking at my life from someplace that I don't know? Of? What is what is a fish doing except for swimming around a bowl? This is. <gasps> says, just thought I'd take a moment out of my incredibly exciting life to write. How cute is that, Miss Stephanie? It says, hey, saw this while shopping for school supplies and thought of you two crazy ketos. I so enjoy and appreciate all you do to make the keto journey a little easier for us. Have a great day, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you very much. And well, look, what is it? Look at this. It's avocados working out on a folder. Is this the cutest thing ever? I am absolutely putting all of my stuff for the week in here. I am so excited about this. Thank you, Stephanie. She knows I love paper school supplies. I know, I'm you really, something is all definitely about wrong with you. Paper school supplies. I like this thing. I feel like I'm in trouble. <laughs> I better put this away. Yes. So we did a live stream the other day. We did. That was a lot of fun. We thank didn't know what we were doing, but well, thank you for showing up. Yes, that was like we did not expect that many people in there. That was awesome. The first couple minutes were kind of weird. Like evidently, I hit the mute button on the audio, so everyone was like, "We can't hear you." So what happened was, is you're allowed to go back in later and edit. Like the video, you can cut out pieces. I can't add stuff, but you can cut stuff out. So I, I cut out like the first three minutes where you couldn't hear us. Right. But what that does is it deletes the in-stream chat. Oh. So I think though, the next time we do it, if we don't have to edit it at all, yeah. hopefully we'll get better at this. We're, we're gonna try. So uh, we'll be able to like leave that chat up because a lot of people like had that yes. on there. But I was reading through the comments because we kept missing comments and a lot of people want a cookbook. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I don't know. That that will have to be a long time coming Man. because like it'll take a long time to come up with well, stuff. Well, thank you guys for even like wanting that. that yeah. What a 
what an honor. And somebody's going to have to photograph stuff because, like, I'm the worst photographer. Yeah, it'll be the only cookbook with, like, Polaroids. <laughs> We're, like, Polaroid level. The one that everybody really wanted was a, a So Easy Rachel Can Do It cookbook. Yes! Oh, my gosh. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Because then you could do stuff with your kids. Because, I mean, like, if I could do it, like, you could do it with your children. Wait a second. I just realized you're still wearing those things on your head. I, I am. didn't even notice that. I turned off the, the flasher though and it was funny because we had a couple of times where I had to like call a parent so I had to go into the sanctuary to like make it so that they could put it up on the screen like you know whatever the kid number was so it can kind of flash on the screen and let the parents know that like we need their Even attention issue. but I would go in and have to like turn off my lights because I really want to like walk into the sanctuary and be like hey guys <laughs> I want to like go in like inconspicuously so yeah so what's with the eyes well, today, um, it, I, I'm a monster because we're so close to Halloween. Or an alien. The kids called me different things. I was thinking maybe you were tying it into the racing theme or something. Well, I should. I'll be back to the racing theme next week. But yeah, no, I have like different planets and stuff on my jeans. So I thought this kind of worked with oh, okay. aliens. I was talking to Anthony about like next week because in our elementary room, they're going to be talking about sharing. Yes. And so one of the activities we're going to do is now we have like 150 kids in there. The last time I did this, like we had like eight. So this yeah. was very easy. It, and, so, it, and you have six services yes. that this is across. So the idea is we're going to bring in like a big thing of like donuts or something, which we forgot to send another thing to parents that we're going to have donuts for we'll them have next a, week. We'll have, we'll a have to put a sign up next I week. I think it's not next week. I think it's the next next week. Well, so we were talking about what the idea is, is you're going to bring in this big thing of donuts and every kid in the class is going to get them. So long as one kid goes, you know what? I'm not going to have any so that you can all have them. And that is a hard thing so, to do. So, you know, basically one person has to give up his donuts for the entire class to get. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, when this person does this, what they won't know is that they're going to get a bigger prize, which Anthony's like, it should be an entire cake. Aw. So. Maybe we could give away that arcade game. No, it's going to be some, it'll be something really good. But I started thinking that, like, you know, when you have this many kids, odds are there's going to be one kid that just is like, yeah, I don't like donuts. I'll, I'll do it. And that kind of defeats the purpose of this, doesn't it? Well, maybe at that point. At that point, you can say to that person, like, well, then it can't be you. Because well, it's not really a sacrifice if I you don't care. I told Anthony what we're going to do is we're going to make it be, like, a percentage. So, like, at least three kids have to give it up. All right. And we'll give away multiple prizes. That's good. I like that. I'm interested to see what happens. Like, how many kids are willing to give up, like, good donuts so that everybody else can have it. And that's kind of like Halloween too, right? You, you're giving away the best candy. Right, exactly. And you get back garbage sometimes. Yeah. Well, that was always the thing. I can remember when we'd buy school supplies and I would I would buy like the coolest folders with like the coolest pictures on them and stuff. And I would be like, I really want to put my child's name on this because you would bring in school supplies and then it just goes into a community chest. Right. And then it gets handed out and like, Year after year, I would be taking in, like, magnificent folders and my kids would get back, like, a really crappy one. And I'm like, man, I really want to put my kid's name on this because, like, this is what we brought. But, yeah, sometimes you give more than you get back. That's and you right. have to be okay with that and think about, you know, there's opportunities to do something for the greater good. And that's right. not a bad lesson to learn. Right. Like, that's a good lesson. But I thought that was funny even as an adult. I should be like sharing and them feel good to be bringing their best, even if that means they don't get the very best back. But I was being kind of petty. Well, the idea of this lesson is to teach them that, is that when they share and they give out, they're going to get back even more. Yeah. So do you want to do comments? Yes, please. Let's do comments. Do we have a subscriber of the week? We have a couple of subscribers of the week. Yay. Um, let me pull this up. So the first one, I'm not going to put a picture up. Okay. But I was just like really proud of her. Mm -hmm. It's Viva Jay's daughter. Viva Jay. So I don't know if you saw, but he put up like, I guess she started doing keto. So he just wrote, keto works for children too. My daughter, Sammy, started back around the middle of March 
and then she put up her photos from a year ago, and then, like, I'm really proud of her. Like, she looks really, really Congratulations, good. Sammy. You are awesome. I mean, she is a child, so we're not going to put yeah, her Yeah, I'm not going to put her up. pictures up just because she's a child, and, like, I haven't gotten permission from Jason or anything like that. But I just wanted to mention, like, really proud of her because she five. looks great. You look fantastic, and I hope you're having an awesome school year. Yeah. Because you're awesome. So the next one is from Mary Jo. Hey, Mary Jo. And I'm going to put her pictures up here. And uh, Mary Jo wrote, side by side with my brother on the left is from October 2017 on the right from this week. After my success losing weight, 83 pounds so far, and wow. getting off of insulin, Whew. he started doing keto and has lost 50 pounds and is almost off of insulin. Oh my gracious. The way coolest thing is that we work together in his retail business and we have been a witness to a lot of our customers who have actually turned their health around too. Wow. I love two crazy ketos. And I'm so happy I discovered you through Nurse Cindy's interview with KetoCon. Oh. I especially love how you live out the joy of the Lord. Awesome! Oh, thank well, oh you. my goodness. You yes, guys me. both look incredible. Let me see. Wow! Is oh that my awesome? gosh! Wow! And that's like a special place in my heart for like a brother sister team. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so the last one is going to be Amber Marie. Hey, Amber. And I'll put Amber's pictures up here. Amber wrote, hey guys, I was approved a few days back and I just want to say hello. My husband and I have been doing keto for the last four months. We did a ra another round uh, about a year ago, but fell off the wagon. Been there, done uh, that. This time things seem to be going much better. We really enjoy watching Two Crazy Keto's YouTube channel. Thanks for introducing us to that amazing pumpkin maple creamer. Oh. For me personally, keto has been incredibly healing. I went through an, an eating disorder and repairing my metabolism and also finding my mindset with food seemed impossible. Through keto and exercise, I am not back at my smallest adult weight, but this time I'm actually getting the calories, nutrition, and social moments with food that I was lacking before. Yes. I also feel a deep inner peace as I return to how I should feel about my own body. I have so much gratitude for that, and I appreciate the ad and look forward to getting to know you all. Awesome. Well, welcome. Well, oh, absolutely. my gracious. Look Let me see. how great she looks. Wow. Oh my goodness, you look amazing. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. So if you guys are new to our channel, we have a Facebook site. It's called uh, Two Crazy Ketos Family. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, there's a link down below, and it's just full of awesome people who are great for encouraging. And we like to go through every week and pull out some of the success stories and kind of just put them up here and share because what a success that you may have. Uh, is definitely going to impact somebody else. Whereas our story may not impact somebody, yeah. your story might. So please make sure you continue sharing your stories. Absolutely. And it's also like such a great resource for if someone's having a bad day, just at like, you're not by yourself. There's so much encouragement there. There's recipes. People like let us know when there's like a deal at a store on a product. I mean, it's just awesome. Right. The whole thing is like just really helpful Yeah. to me. So before we go into the comments, I did want to say mention with the live again. So we're going to start trying to do a live because football season's coming to an end. So we're going to try to do one every Thursday. Except for this Thursday, I think is Halloween. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to do one this Thursday. We'll be with trick-or-treaters. And I think we're going to push it back to 8 o'clock, right? We're going to push it back to 8 o'clock Eastern time, which should give everybody Enough time hopefully to get home a chance to get home. From work. Sometimes we may do it on Facebook too. We're gonna to see which one seems to be better, you yeah. know. But yeah, we're gonna do it. On, if we do it on Facebook, it'll get posted on YouTube later. Yeah, you know. Uh, but I think we're gonna do it every Thursday at eight o'clock, or at least we're gonna try that. We may have to move it around a little bit come lacrosse season and stuff like that. But That's, this week is Halloween, so we won't be doing it. But it'll be next week. Yeah. So let's get into the comments. So Tina wrote, hey, Tina. you should do a live where you decorate the subscriber tree. It'd be really fun for us to tune in and hang out and watch. Yes. Oh my gosh. We could all get a cup of coffee and like decorate the tree. Yeah. I think we're going to do that. So Debbie wrote, hey Debbie, I'm glad you received the ornament. Thank you. There was another one as well. Hopefully you have that one too. I think that's the I one right there. I think that's this guy. She wrote, grape zip fizz is one of my favorites. Did she said grape. She said grape. Debbie. There, there's a lot of comments on Zip Fizz. I only picked a couple of them, but yeah. Is there another grape fan? Yes. Oh. She says, as for eggnog and chocolate holiday recipes, how about an eggnog chocolate parfait? Ooh. Would look pretty in a clear glass and taste delicious. Oh, you are so right. Yes. What is that where a donkey on Shrek is like, who's ever said like, no, I don't like parfait. Everybody likes parfait. <laughs> 
Katrina wrote. Hey, Katrina. I'm with Rachel. I'm a fruit punch girl. Yes. I also stash them so nobody finds them. I have a secret drawer in my craft area for all my keto stuff. The only one who knows about it is my oldest daughter. Well, we can't, now we can't say her comment because we're going to be giving away where her fruit punch zip fizz stash is. I had a secret stash of zip fizz because like Rachel has some flavors that I like that she also likes. So like fruit punch being one of them. So we would get some fruit punch. I would take three or four of them and I would stick them in my secret stash. And I was like, there is no way she's going to find them. She found them. Oh, yeah. In my car's glove box. I'm like, I can sniff them out. <laughs> so now this time, because they were on sale at Costco, I bought you a box of fruit punch and I bought you a box of limon. Okay. I bought me a box of fruit punch and a box of limon. Okay. If you run out. Okay. You're out. No. Yes. No. Mine will be hidden and I promise you won't find this one. And I'm not sharing it with Challenge you accepted. or anybody else. You have yours. I have mine. I have yours and mine. No. What's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. I'm like a toddler. If I've ever seen it, it's mine. <laughs> if I think about it, it's mine. Christina wrote. Hey, Christina. I really enjoy the iced tea zip fizz. It used to be my favorite. I never wanted to try the orange cream. It didn't sound good to me, but one day I broke down and I tried it and now it's my favorite. I love the you, orange cream He one. loves orange cream. Wait, the, the tea, is that the one we returned? We have not had the tea one yet. Where There's it's just an a regular tea. tea. It's an iced tea one, but I just noticed Amazon Finally put Zip Fizz on Prime. At least it was the other day. Yes. So I think it was $30 for a box of 30. Because it used to be you would go on Amazon and you'd pay like $40 for like 20 tubes. And it was like yeah. never worth it. So yeah, I definitely want to try the IC. I've, I've heard good and bad things. I think it's one of those love hate. You either really like it or you really hate it. Well, yeah. Like. I didn't really want the peach tea because I'm not a peach person. Right. But like regular tea. But it was tea, good. Regular tea. Mm -hmm, maybe. Uh, Teal wrote. Hey, Teal. Zip Fizz Citrus in the yellow tube is super tart. That's the other one I really want to try. Ooh, I want to try that. I, he wrote, I mix it with blueberry raspberry. The lemon iced tea has a mild lemon flavor, but it's a little weird to have fizzy tea. My very favorite flavor is grape. Because it's more sweet than tart. Teal. Sorry, Rachel. Oh, man. Grape. But I like the mashup. I like that you're like mixing, mixing them. them all up. We're all going to become like mixologists. Constance wrote. Hey, Constance. Rachel, that's so funny. I love Sesame Street. I like Snuffleupagus. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I love Snuffleupagus. In fact, I actually had a stuffed Snuffleupagus. Really? Try saying that fast three times. Vicky Tree wrote. Hey, Vicky. I remember the Ladybug song. Thank you. <laughs> now, I nailed it, right? Because you found the song after I sang it. I did. So, you know how a, a lot of times I'm very guilty of hearing a song in my head one way and it, the lyrics actually being totally different. I wanted to play more of it, but you know, you have to worry about copyright issues. So you're limited to like, you know, nine to 10 seconds, but I found the actual set of lyrics that you sang. It's, it's a, the second verse. It's a good song. Camden wrote, Hey Camden. I'm 20 something and I definitely remember that song. Yes. Delissa wrote, hey, Delissa. Yes, Rachel. The Ladybug song was my absolute favorite. Uh, Sybil actually wrote, Hey, Sybil. I've always loved the American ladybugs. They don't bite or sting. However, Japanese ladybugs have invaded in the past few years, and those can bite. Huh. They're usually a yellow or light orange color. I know exactly. I've seen those. The bug you're talking about. But I didn't know they could bite. Yeah, now I Now I'm afraid either. of them. And she wrote, you two are wonderful together. You're wonderful. Jennifer wrote, Hey, Jennifer. My favorite Sesame Street character was Snuffleupagus. He's awesome. I loved him. As for my favorite Zip Fizz, it's definitely Fruit Punch. <sighs> yum. Speaking of yum, Joe, why don't you do the eggnog cannoli cream in a chocolate cannoli shell? Ooh. Both flavors in one dessert. Ooh. I would love to do that, but I have strict instructions. I have to have two recipes. Oh, man. But, but I still may do that. I was going to say, you need to do that anyway, because that sounds delicious. That just delicious. sounds really, really good. Brilliant, Jennifer. Okay, so all of these comments now for the Keto Chow Challenge recipe. Like, okay. There are people like giving us suggestions for the recipe. Thank you, guys. There's some good ones in here. All right. So Ellen wrote. Hey, Ellen. Uh, make fudge or chocolate crinkle. That would be awesome. Okay. She said, sorry, I don't like cannolis. Oof. 
I love cannolis. I never tasted a cannoli until we got married. I like cannoli cream cakes, too. Like where you would buy birthday cake, but it's got the cannoli filling instead of the buttercream. I didn't even know it was a thing until we got married. Oh, my gosh. What's wrong with you? I just didn't grow up with it. She said, I'm not a fan of the cream cheese fudge recipes. I haven't tried Zip Fizz, but I already know that I'm going to like fruit punch and maybe black cherry. Because you're awesome. Black cherry is okay. It's not as good as fruit punch. It's Nothing is as good as fruit punch. Yes, Limon is. Uh, it says that she said, thanks for introducing me to keto chow. It fills a huge void. I can't figure out how to fill or I couldn't figure out how to fill. Good. Caramel with butter for the fat is the most awesome ice cream. Isn't it delicious? It's it like is crazy really crazy good. good. Uh, slap a stick food wrote. Hey, slap stick. Eggnog is a great flavor to use. It doesn't matter what holiday you're making. Because if I had chocolate and eggnog, I would make a Cadbury egg cheesecake. Oh, wow. You can use the chocolate for the chocolate section and then eggnog flavor for the inside. How brilliant is this? And that is a holiday. That yes, is, it is like really awesome. Okay, so the Cadbury egg was like my groove for oh, real. The day after Easter, Rachel used to send me to like every store and she's like, go get me every Cadbury egg you can find. Like we could probably buy a second car with my Cadbury egg budget. Have now you ever gone. seen like the history of it? Like how they made it and where it came from? I probably don't even want to know. Has, have you guys ever seen that? There's like a thing on like one of the food channels, like the history of it. Is it bad? Well, what's bad is the amount of sugar that's in that thing. Is it like a time bomb? I mean, it's like worse than drinking like a six pack of Coke. I'm sure. It's really bad. All that goo in the middle. But it was delicious at the time. No matter how many years have passed, they're still using the same commercial, yeah. right? Like that, that lion with like the, the bunny ears and stuff. Like it's the same one from when I was a child. Krista wrote. Hey, Krista. I'm thinking one recipe would be eggnog tiramisu using the chocolate keto chow. Yeah. So both in one dish. No almond flour, please, as I can't eat that. I have fibromyalgia, so uh, too high in copper for us, and it causes pain. Oh, wow. Okay. I always loved tiramisu. It was like one of my favorite desserts. Me Rachel used to get that too. for me all the time. Yep. Uh, but I, I tend to use coconut flour more in my baking lately than the almond flour. And so why is that? I just like it better. Yeah. yeah. MJ wrote, Hey MJ. A chocolate chow peppermint pie would be an interesting option to try for the chocolate keto chow recipe. I've actually been thinking about like some kind of a peppermint thing because I'm like candy canes, Andy's candies. Like that's kind of Christmas. If you could come up with like a York peppermint patty, the things I have done for the sensation of a York peppermint patty. You don't even want to know. It's bad. KJ wrote. Hey, KJ. Eggnog custard with a caramel topping or a chocolate topping, two in one. I really like where these recipe ideas are going. <laughs> I like it. We're going to get really fat trying to make these. Um, yeah, because we're, we're, we're going to have to taste test them all multiple times. We made, okay, so that pumpkin spice mug cake. The amount of pumpkin spice mug cake we ate that day, I don't think we ate food that day. We, we were did. Like, we literally just ate like a thousand calories in pumpkin spice mug cakes because we kept like, and it's not perfect yet. Go back to the drawing board, Joe. Do it again. It I'm like, it's good enough. Nope, not good enough. It felt like it was one of those punishments that's like, oh, you want to try cigarettes? Now you're going to have to smoke the whole pack. It's like, oh, you like pumpkin spice muffins? Now you're going to have to eat a dozen of them. I did want to say, though, you mentioned in there in that recipe video that, you know, it was Team Rachel or Team Joe. The one that we ended up with was kind of a combination of the two. Yeah. Because the original Team Rachel was almost like a, like a custard, right? It was like kind of gooey. And mine was too muffiny. So down in the description of that recipe on our website, you have the actual recipe that we did on video. Then there's another one to just lower the carbs, but it's kind of got the same consistency. And then there's another version where you actually cut the amount of pumpkin and everything out. And that makes it much more like uh, a cake, a muffin rather. Now we sound like Chris from Keto Chow where it's like we have 2.0, we have 2.14, and we have 2.2. <laughs> yeah, three different versions in one recipe. Uh, Tina wrote, hey, Tina. I suggest eggnog creme brulee. Oh, yeah. I have tried to make creme brulee pre-keto, and I never could get it right. That little crystallized top. Could never get it right. Jay Perk wrote. Hey, Jay Perk. An eggnog custard with chocolate ganache drizzle. These are some good recipes. Brilliant, y'all. 
Uh, Erica wrote hey, eggnog Erica. flan with chocolate drizzle. Oh, now, I flan, bet. I love. Yes. Love I bet that would that. be delicious. Rebecca wrote. Hey, Rebecca. I laughed. I cried. Awesome episode, guys. Thank I you. just love watching you guys. The love that you share for each other and all of your subscribers just makes my heart happy. Man. Again, thanks for all you guys do and for all the awesome information you provide for us. Well, that took me by surprise because we're I'm like in recipe mode. Rebecca, thank you so much. Sorry, I forgot to tell you we were off of recipes. What a sweet message. Constance wrote. Hey, Constance. Boaz wants to be your taste tester. I just love him. Oh, my gosh. He is, like, all up in our business. Your right? mother hasn't watched that video yet, right? I don't think so. But she, yeah. She's going to yell at me when she finds out, like, I'm feeding her dog, like, coffee. And, did she? Well, or not feeding her dog yeah, coffee. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be like, you denied my dog coffee. I am that mom, Rose. Oh, my gosh. That's a cute <laughs> that name. That is an awesome name. I love that. She said, my dog hits my coffee all the time. I have to carry my cup with me until I'm done with it. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, I have to guard everything that I have in my hands from Tabitha. You have to guard everything everywhere with, especially with Tabitha, but with all the cats. The cats, like, Roscoe likes to stick his head in your water. Yes. And then, yeah, Charity will just eat anything. Yeah. And Tabitha, yeah, if it gets left there, I mean, one time, like, we put, like, a whole thing of ground beef on the counter and she Gone. pulled it down. But the best thing about her was... One day, Rachel was doing the dishes, and she was taking everything out of the sink and loading up the dishwasher, and Tabitha just kind of strolled up and started, like, cleaning the dishes that were going into the dishwasher. So bad. So Rachel's like, this is kind of cool, because, like, it's, like, one more level of clean. Like, all of the junk is off of the plates, but right? I'm a bad mom. And she's getting, like, some good, delicious food. Oh, my gosh. And there's just nothing ever bad. But it annoys Caleb. It is Caleb's pet peeve. He can't stand it. So every time he, the dishwasher opens, Tabitha, wherever she is in the house, comes running. Because it's like, ooh, dishwasher, I get to clean the plates. And he's like, no. Not on his watch. <laughs> uh, Rosie wrote. Hey, Rosie. Listening to your success stories while trying to put on my eye makeup is a big mistake on Mondays. <laughs> Aww. Thank you for all you do. Rosie, you're so sweet. Uh, Gail wrote. Hey, Gail. Apart from the Keto Child Dessert Challenge, I would love to see Joe do a rich, delicious keto eggnog for drinking. Oh, yeah. I've always loved eggnog pre-keto. Pre I've not had any for years. Joe, that shell looks delicious. Yes, please use allulose. Yes, eggnog-filled cannoli sounds yummy. I loved eggnog pre-keto. When I was growing up, my dad used to make eggnog all the time with the real eggs. I mean, just like... Yeah loading all the eggs up that is definitely a good idea to we make some that eggnog. is definitely going to be like a request from my mom because we actually like they've started to put eggnog out because we're heading towards the holidays and i guess they're skipping thanksgiving altogether now it's like oh well, we're printing out the christmas drinks well you saw yeah we were in bj's the other day it's not even halloween yet and all the christmas stuff is as soon as you walk in the door too but she actually kind of sounded like a sad little girl she was like oh when we passed it because it was like you can't have the eggnog that they're selling in the containers no, with all that all sugar, sugar. And, and fake milk and so yeah you got to come up with an eggnog here's the question do we do an eggnog recipe with or without brandy i think you need to try an either or i don't know i mean there's something about the eggnog with the alcohol in it there's <laughs> Vida wrote, Hey, Vida. OMG, at the poop shooting parrot. That's crazy. Try living with it. I didn't even want to vacuum my floor around that cage. <laughs> I actually had forgotten his name. Anthony reminded Zazu. me. Zazu. Yeah, it was Zazu. Alan wrote, Hey, Alan. I kept my African gray Lulu in the clinic. She loves saying chiropractic acupuncture. Ouch. I'll get you, my pretty, and that little dog of yours, too. Oh, my gosh. She also said, thank you, Jesus, and many other things. Okay, so funny story about thank you, Jesus. We've tried. So, I don't know how long have we... We've had Grayson, what, almost six years? Yeah. Five, six years. <clears throat> the first thing we tried to teach him how to say was, Jesus, Jesus loves, loves you. you. And I had recorders, and we tried everything. Just saying it to him all day, giving him treats. Like putting a little recorder and having it just repeated over and over and over again. And his face was like hilarious of like, when you're wanting to teach them to do something, it's like blank. Like, I have no idea what you're, you might as well just be speaking a foreign language. Like yeah. they, they have no idea. He's just looking at you like, you look crazy. I don't speak. Yeah. 
six years later, still won't say Jesus loves you. Our pastor comes to visit us a couple years ago, walks up to him three times, says, dominate. dominate. And yeah, he yells it all the time. Literally, he heard the word three times. On a one, one occasion. Yeah. And then other things, my sister-in-law comes over with like a phone playing R2-D2 sounds. He's got that down. Got that down. Boaz visits, has her little, his little bark. Got that down. Got that. Got the cat crying. There's a new one this week that I noticed. There is a sound that the FedEx gun makes when it scans that you've received your package and right. he like gives it to you. Got that. He's got that down because I think that he is drawn to things that get our attention. Right. So of course, when you hear that little blue, 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 like Joe gets up and is like, Ooh, I've got something from Amazon. So, and, and heads out. So yeah, he was just making that sound, but it was like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, we cannot be getting a package at 11 o'clock at night. But of course I went to the door and it was like, Oh, he totally got me. It's the bird. Yeah. The other sound that I thought was interesting is, so we have the Dyson, the rechargeable Dyson. Yeah. And if you have one of those, when you first pick it up and press the trigger, it's got like a wind up noise. Mm -hmm. And we store that in the same room that he's in. So now as soon as you even go to pick up the vacuum, don't even press the trigger. He does the wind up noise. Yeah. So we did find out that a lot of times, like you said, the reason that birds learn things like microwave sounds and stuff like mm -hmm. that is because, yeah, they know that like it gets your attention. So birds quickly learn that like whenever the microwave beeps and it's done, you go to it, you're going to go to it. So if the bird is near the microwave or like on the path to the microwave and it will quickly like learn that and start making the microwave sound to get you to come out so that he can see you. So maybe that's the key. We need to say like, Jesus loves you, and then one of us approach the cage. That's a good idea. Let's try it. Because the bottom line is, if you don't have an African Grey, you are living with a perpetual five-year-old. A prankster, yeah. too. Uh, jo uh, Jay Dottie wrote, Hey Jay. Great keto on the couch. I think cannolis with eggnog filling are fantastic. I can't wait for the recipe. I was going to attempt them for this year's Christmas desserts. Are you going to dip the ends in pistachios or chocolate chips? Ooh. I didn't even think about that. What yeah, a great idea. That. My husband and I were rolling on the floor laughing about your bird incident with Rachel. Another great episode. Thank you. People just like knowing that a bird was shooting poop at you. Well, I mean, it's strange. Right? Like, but, but that, that animal can't stay. Like you can't live the next 50 years with a bird shooting poop at you. SMCLA channel wrote, Hey, I would love to see you both do a video on all of the different ways you can make meals out of a big log of ground beef. Challenge accepted. Yeah, we could definitely do that. But yeah. speaking of challenges, you have a challenge that you need to do before Tuesday. What is that? You have to sit down in one sitting and drink three keto chows. Oh, yeah. Because I'm all Chris about... Chris has challenged you that he doesn't think you can do it. Now, remember, that is all of your food for the entire day in a one-hour sitting drinking three keto chows. <sighs> I don't think you're going to be able to do it. I think you're going to get sick. We're going to see. <laughs> We're going to see if I can do it. Liz wrote... Hey, Liz. How about pickled eggs? Talk about a quick snack. We definitely need to do that. Yeah, we were talking about that on the live stream the other night. And I've really thought about making pickled eggs. But all of the research I've done has said that uh, they really smell during the pickling process. Because, you know, you have to open up the container to burp them. Like farty? And I don't know what it smells like, but from what I understand, it's pretty foul. But some people on the live stream the other day suggested some other things, like putting them in pickle juice and stuff. Well, I feel like that seems smart. So we're going to try that. If we are successful with the egg, should we work our way up to like a pickled sausage? I'm thinking like pickled chicken feet. No. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> there were some really Stick good that ideas. In some, per in some pickle juice. There were some really good ideas. Oh, I forgot about him. There's your, there's your <gasps> pickle. There's your chicken feet. <gasps> 
there were some good ideas on that live stream and comments though. People were talking about like taking chicken and marinating it in pickle juice. We have got to try that. That sounded delicious. Some of them really sound good. We're going to be trying those. Kim wrote. Hey, Kim. I would be interested in the seafood challenge info, but my hubby does not eat any fish or seafood, nor wild game or lamb. This can sometimes make it difficult for us to eat the same meals. Yeah, I am not a huge seafood eater. I like sushi, and I've always liked shrimp, but really even the shrimp, I really only wanted it fried. I think that the only reason why I've been okay with that, because I do like seafood more, is because I'm cheap. And so seafood, <laughs> seafood can, be expensive. can be expensive. So I've been like, okay, like I guess we'll just eat beef or chicken or whatever. But like, I'm very excited for this. Yeah, we're going to do the seafood challenge. I'm not quite sure when, because we have to figure it out. We also have to go get some seafood, so we're waiting for some stuff to go on sale. And it'll be different than like a beef and butter. It can't just be beef and, yeah. you know, seafood and butter. I'm definitely not doing a seafood only challenge. It'll just be like, it'll be like the highlight the protein say, it's got it's got to be the main event speaking of like a weird kind of only challenge i noticed in our facebook group that vivijay and somebody else was it tara or katie is doing a wings week this week they're eating only wings can we get in on that i don't want to do only wings <laughs> please I love wings. How about we'll have wings as part of your meal every day? Okay. But, like, you know, the bottom line is wings, that's like 100 calories a wing. You don't get many. I know, but they're so good. <laughs> okay, so last one. Doll wrote. Hey, doll. To figure the hidden carbs, just Google nutrition facts for a larger amount. For example, to figure out the carbs in one tablespoon of heavy cream, Google nutrition facts for one cup of heavy whipping cream. Ooh, smart. It's 6.6 .6 grams of carbs. Then divide that by 16, which is 16 tablespoons in a cup. Total carbs in a tablespoon of heavy cream is 0.415. So two tablespoons, a serving on most containers, is still under one gram. So the label reads zero carbs. Hmm. It's sneaky. Yeah. Some of those zero carb things actually have 0.99 grams per serving. They quickly add... Um, if you're trying to keep total carbs below 20 or 10. It do, it is. It does add up. Yeah, because the the laws are so weird. So I know we've talked about it before. If it's under 1 but above 0.5, they're supposed to write um, less than 1. Right. If it's under 0.5, they can actually put 0. So what do they do? They adjust the serving size. Yeah. That's why, like, if you look on the organic horizons, a serving size is 1 tablespoon. Now they can put zero because yeah. it's 0. 0.415. I love when they get really shifty and they're like one sixteenth of a teaspoon. And you're like, who is measuring out this like little tiny bit? Well, it's just like keto farms. I love keto farms. It's, it's the snack mix that I probably buy the most. And I know it's expensive, but there's something about that dehydrated cheese with the dehydrated Strawberry. strawberries. My favorite is the tomato pepper jack, right? Now it's a... Uh, jalapeno one mm -hmm. but i just love that stuff but if you look at the servings it's like this bag contains 3.25 servings and you're like no it doesn't can't we just say three or make it four but like first of all i i can't even be controlled with that stuff i, I you can't trust me because i eat the whole bag yeah you have to say it's one serving anthony had some the other day and he was like this stuff is fire i'm like i told you this stuff is like awesome it's but, really good. Yeah, what happens is is they mess with the serving size because that allows them to sh lower the carbs. So you just have to be careful. Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> we are going to, a lot of people have been asking me or asking us in our like either Facebook group or on comments about doing something with chronometer. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do a video. It'll be a quick video, like me in front of the computer with a, a screen share okay. of how to use chronometer and figuring out your carbs and things like that. I like knowing that that's coming. And Sometimes like I, I have said, a hard time with it. Yeah. And like I said, when it comes to like the carbs, like Doll was talking about, my suggestion is always round up. Yeah. You know, the, I wouldn't worry about meat, that kind of stuff, but any of these package things, if it says zero, Assume it's one, or at least assume it's a half. And the worst thing that could happen is you've like worked out, you know, you have less carbs than you thought you did. Right. That's not going to hurt you. But that's how it gets you. I was talking to somebody in one of the Facebook groups the other day, and they're like, heavy cream has zero carbs. I'm like, no, it doesn't. All heavy cream, it's like 0.415 carbs 
per serving. It's just like, what are they doing in the serving label? And they're like, well, if you're only having a tablespoon, that's fine. I'm like, yeah, but let's look at all of the hidden carbs you have. If a lot of people are doing more than a tablespoon or they're doing a tablespoon in their coffee three, four times a day. I was gonna say, I don't think I've ever just had just a tablespoon. So now you're at four tablespoons. So you're at a couple carbs. Then you add in the hidden carbs that are in your spices because the spice label says zero, but you're putting in more than a quarter of a teaspoon. Then you add in the fact that, hey, most people don't know, eggs actually have a carb in it. They have a little bit less than a carb per egg. So it's like by the time I go to bed, it's like foiled again. Right. So if you're rounding up, you're going to help yourself. Yeah. So, well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. I don't know how long this one went. I feel like this one went pretty good. Or did we just not screw up and don't have about like two hours of editing to do? You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, sir. Nothing weird came out of your mouth this time. There's still time in the day. <laughs> um, I am excited about Halloween, so yes. make sure everybody posts their pictures about like what they're giving away. And Absolutely. They're, I can't wait to see cutie patootie kiddos and grand kiddos yeah. in costumes. So, so like I said, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Please do us a favor and leave some comments and questions down below, and we will read them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Yeah. And please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.